Hi everyone, I'm Rinzi and this is Rinzi Reads. Today I thought I would do like a Read Harder Challenge update video. It's basically the end of the year and the Read Harder Challenge was basically like my only real goal that I had for the year in terms of like structured reading. I will have a separate goals video going up later this week so you guys can look forward to that where I will do like sort of an overview on how I felt I did with my reading in 2018 and what I want to do in 2019 so I won't be talking about all of that here. So what I will be doing in this video is I will be going through the different tasks for the Read Hunter Challenge and talking about which book I read for each test. Now I have completed 23 out of the 24 tasks for the Read Harder Challenge and I can already tell that some of you guys are like why are you doing this video if you only have one task left and there's only two weeks left in the year and you can very easily read whatever book you need to read to complete that task. You are right, but I really just don't feel like it. <laughs> I am just someone who really hates being told what to read or what to do in general, uh, but especially what to read, especially because like this is supposed to be fun and like I'll just say it. Okay, so the task that I have yet to complete or I have not completed and I don't plan on completing is the read a book you were assigned in high school that you either never read or never finished or anything along those lines. So I've talked about this in previous videos where I've talked about my goals and basically I don't remember that many books from high school that I was required to read that I did not finish and so the only or that I didn't like and the only two I could think of were A Tale of Two Cities and Scarlet Letter and I have zero desire to read either of those books again. In fact, I have like less than zero desire. I've actually gone on Audible multiple times thinking to myself, I'll just get the audiobook version of one of those books and then I can just like play it in the background as I'm doing other things and I'll have the task complete. And every time I like go on there and I listen to the samples of the different versions that are on Audible and I get bored just listening to the samples you guys. So I'm just not gonna do it and I'm okay with that. I'm not like a completionist like I'm the type of person where when I'm watching a TV show and I start getting bored I'll just stop even if it's in the middle of a season and I'll just stop watching the show like I stop watching TV shows all the time. If I'm not enjoying something I stop doing it hence why I recently quit my job. Anyways <laughs> so yeah. I have just decided I'm 1000% okay with only completing, only completing 23 out of the 24 tasks. Completing 23 tasks I think is great. Um, and it's not like I'm being graded or I get some sort of prize. Maybe if there's like a prize. I mean, I guess there technically is one because you get a coupon code for, for the book ride store, but really I don't need a coupon code for the book ride store. Uh, not because like I get some sort of discount, but mostly because I'm okay with paying full price for those things if I want them. This is a real tangent I'm on. Anyways, <laughs> let's get into the 23 tasks I did complete and which books I read for it. Um, I'm just going to run through these really quickly. I'm not going to try to do any real explanations about them. I'll just yeah do this really quick. First for a book published posthumously I read When Birth Becomes Air. This book is amazing. If you haven't read it yet I highly recommend it. I listened to it on audiobook and I cried. So yeah it's great. For a book of true crime I read In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. I've actually read multiple true crime books <laughs> over the course of the year. That was just the first one I finished. Next I read a classic of genre fiction and for that one was Kindred by Octavia Butler. I'm actually really glad for the task because I finally read Octavia Butler and now I need to read more of her. For a comic written and illustrated by the exact same person I read Super Mutant Magic Academy by Jillian Tamaki. Again very glad for this task because I got me to finally read some Jillian Tamaki and I adore her and I now follow her on Instagram. So that's a thing. For a book that takes place in one of the BRICS countries, I first read Widows of Malabar Hill. I've read multiple books that take place in those countries, but the first one I completed was The Widows of Malabar Hill by Sujata Masi. For a book about nature, I read The Sixth Extinction by, I think it's Elizabeth Colbert probably should have that written down somewhere. But yeah, I like that book and it also helped me check off the my like goals of like reading a Pulitzer Prize winning book. For reading a western, I read Under a Painted Sky, which was not my jam, but that's okay. I gave it a try. For a comic written or illustrated by a person of color, I read The Best We Could Do by Ty Bue, which is just beautiful. If you haven't read that one yet, cannot recommend it highly enough. For a colonial or post-colonial 
book. I ended up picking There There by Tommy Orange. I did not think about that being a book that I could complete for that task until I think I did an update video and all of you guys, or not all of you, but a couple of you guys were like, hey, you read There There by Tommy Orange. That one counts. So I'm counting it. For a romance novel by or about a person of color, the first one that I read was A Bollywood Affair by Sonali Dev, which I did not enjoy. But if you want one that you probably will enjoy, at least if you can handle like slightly steamier scenes, uh, you can do any of Alyssa Cole's books because I adore those books. For a children's classic published before 1980, I read A Wrinkle in Time and unfortunately I did not enjoy it, mostly because I think I'm like out of the age range of that target audience and so I lost some of the magic there. For a celebrity memoir, I listened to Trevor Noah's Born a Crime, which is so good. So good. For an Oprah book club selection, I read An American Marriage by Tayari Jones, which also so good. For a book of social science, I read Evicted by Matthew Desmond. The book is sitting literally right behind me. And that one again won the Pulitzer Prize, so that was a sort of double check mark for that. For a one sitting book, I listened to the novella The Pearl by John Steinbeck. For read the first book in a new to you young adult series, I read Forest of a Thousand Lanterns, which man, it feels like forever ago that I read that book, but technically I read it in like I think January or February. For a science fiction novel with a female protagonist written by a female author, I counted A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. For a comic that isn't published by Marvel or DC, I read Goldie Vance. I've actually read multiple volumes of Goldie Vance so far this year. For a book of genre fiction written in translation, I read The Gun by, oh man, I don't remember. The cover will be on the screen. Um, but that book was very, very good. And I want to read more books by that author. For read a book with a cover you hate, I read the romance novel Fatal Affair, which has one of those super cheesy covers or at least the ebook version that I got has one of those super cheesy covers. I think they've actually redesigned these covers because I've looked them up on Amazon and it look, the covers look different so but the version I got from the library had this terrible cheesy cover. For a mystery by a person of color or and or by an LGBTQ plus author, um, I counted The Lost Ones by Sheena Kamal but I've read a lot of those over the course of the year, so that wasn't going to be a task I had a hard time with. For an essay anthology, I read The Fire This Time by Jasmine Ward or edited by Jasmine Ward. There obviously it's an anthology, so there are lots of authors here. And for a book with a female protagonist over the age of 60, I read The Night Guest by an author whose name I cannot remember at the moment. Um, that book was okay. Maybe that's why I can't remember the author's name. No offense. So yeah, those are the 23 out of the 24 tasks that I completed so far this year. Like I said, perfectly content with how I've done on the Read Harder Challenge. And yeah, I'm probably not going to try to finish that 24th task. So <laughs> that's just who I am. So let me know down in the comments if you participated in the Read Harder Challenge, how you guys did this year. If you completed all 24 tasks or not, no matter what, it's okay because you tried. I mean, that's really all it comes down to. Um, unless you're like me and you're just giving up after 23 tests. I mean, I kind of, I mostly tried. I mostly tried. When this video comes out, the Read Hard Challenge for 2019 will be out already. Uh, so let me know if you have looked at that and if you plan on participating next year. Again, I will have another video later this week talking about my goals for next year, my reading goals for next year. Um, so I will be doing a whole separate discussion on that. So I will talk to you guys more in tomorrow's video. Bye.